ready for the lesson today? Here we go. Guys, um, that was my friend Hello Kitty. Um, I'm glad you guys are returned safely from Chuseok break. Please enjoy while Miss K is stuck at the airport, okay? Here we go. See you guys. I know it's been a while, but I know that all Chuseok break you've been thinking about this inverse trick functions, right? So, we basically started this lesson last Thursday, last we saw each other, right? So we're gonna recap a little bit and then we'll get started. But before I do that, you guys, I wanna keep you guys, I wanna kinda remind you guys of uh, maybe what you might have forgot. So you guys, always a few things to keep in mind while you're doing trick uh, inverses, okay? Inverse trick functions, all right? So a couple things to keep in mind. Always, always, always think about the domain and range, but of the original trick functions, but also it's inverses, okay? So go always go back to the, refer to back to the notes, okay? The first few pages. And also ask yourself, whenever you're solving or whenever you're evaluating, what kind of solution are you expecting? Are you expecting an angle or are you expecting a ratio? Always ask yourself that, because then you know how to check your results. For example, if I have an arc sine x, or you know how the notation could be this way, your solution always should be what? You're finding the arc sine. So that means your solution also should always be an angle. So you're looking for the angle. So make sure when you find your solution, it's actually an angle. Okay? Because you remember, arc sine means what? Arc sine means, that means you took arc sine of x, which equaled the ratio. So that means sine of theta must have equaled x. Right? Do you remember that? All right? So you guys, let's sum it up. Okay? So you guys, if you have an arc sine, if you have an arc sine of x, then just remember that you're looking for the angle. If you have a sine theta, that means you're looking for the actual ratio. Okay? If you have our cosine, you're looking for the angle. If you have cosine theta, that means you're looking for the ratio. We're used to doing it this way. We're just not as familiar with the arc sine and our cosine. How about here? If you have our tangent theta x, that means you're looking for the theta, which is the angle. And if you have tangent theta, that means obviously you're looking for the ratio. If you keep those things in mind, then I think you should have no problems. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to review with you a few of the ones that we already went over in class while Ms. Chang was still here um, with you, okay? So you guys, can we go back to this example here? Let's go back to this example here. Let me just give you a, a I know that you have all this filled out already, okay? Uh, but I'm gonna go over these three examples with you, so follow along, this is on page three of your notes, okay? So take a look. So you guys, remember this always? Think of, always think, okay, this is my domain that I'm feeding, what am I gonna get as my answer, the output, okay? So you guys, it's arc sine of zero. Think about it, arc sine of zero. That means this is actually arc sine. This is some sort of ratio that they gave me, right? The ratio is actually zero. So you gotta think, okay? You gotta think. Arc sine of zero, so I'm gonna write that again. Arc sine of zero is equal to what? Like what, right? So you gotta think. Okay, then let's rewrite this. So that means sine, sine of theta, because I need, remember this is actually a ratio here. The answer is gonna be a ratio. This is a ratio, I'm supposed to get a theta. That means sine of this theta here is gonna equal zero. So you gotta refer back. Remember, and also, um, so sine of theta is equal to zero. So think, where is sine zero? But also keep in mind the range of arc sine. Remember arc sine, it could only be from negative pi to pi, negative pi over two to pi over two. So it's within those quadrants, it's zero where? It's gonna be at zero, okay? You should not understand, you should understand that. Let's try it one more, okay? arc cosine of root two over two. So that means it's arc cosine, remember arc cosine? It's always of a ratio, right? That means root two over two is actually a ratio. So what are you looking for? You're looking for an angle. So what does this actually mean though? This actually means cosine of some sort of theta that we're looking for, our solution, is gonna equal a ratio. A ratio of what? Root two over two. So think back, what's the angle that we were looking for? You got it. But you guys think always also the range of this. Our cosine is from zero to pi, right? So you gotta think within those two quadrants, which of them give you a positive cosine? And it's in this quadrant. So that's gonna equal, so that's gonna equal. So therefore, okay, our cosine of root two over two is gonna give you negative, I'm sorry, root two over two is gonna give you pi over four. Why pi over four? Because it's actually root two over, cosine of root two over two is uh, root two over two is uh, positive on this quadrant here within the range of the arc cosine. All right. Now I'm going to give you a few minutes to think about that one again, or look over your notes since we already went over it. Yeah. 
So silently I'll just work. I won't explain it. So are you here yet so far? I'm following the same patterns, guys. So our tangent of a ratio has to give me an angle, but that means tangent of this theta angle has to give me our ratio, which is negative 1 in our case. So think back. Where does it give me that, right? And you remember, our tangent, remember our tangent is all within the range of negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And we already discovered why that's so, okay? So you guys think back to that. And the same thing. Where is it going to give us a negative 1? Negative 1. Tangent is negative only here. So we know it's going to be on this quadrant, and it's only going to be at, that means our tangent of negative 1 is actually negative pi over 4. Notice why it's negative pi over 4, right? Because that means if you actually draw the triangle, you remember this? Tangent is actually negative 1 here, negative pi over 4. All right, so make sure you guys adjust that a little bit. All right, take a little time. All right? All right. Stop the video if you have to, okay, guys? All right. But next, let's actually go to part three. Part three, okay? So you guys, part three is a little bit tricky. Um, it's basically composing, right? You're taking composition of two functions, okay? You're not multiplying, but you're composition. That means you're going to do always work from in to out. Remember compositions of functions like f of g of x, g of h of x, you know? That's the same kind of thing, okay? So now, we're going to take the composition of Tangent of r cosine of 2 third. Well, okay, but there's a little trick to how to do these, okay? That means you're going to have to do this first. And think, what kind of answer are you expecting from this guy? Aren't you expecting an angle, right? But from the total answer, you're going to expect a ratio, okay? So from, so I always take this guy first, okay? That's going to give me an angle. This is going to be give me a, uh, the answer is going to give me the solution, the range, right? Is going to give me a ratio. How about here? This is going to give me an angle. This is going to give me a ratio. How about this case, though? This is going to give me a, that's right, you said it, angle. And then after I compose those, it's going to give me a ratio. How about here? Same thing, angle, ratio. All right, so you guys, let's try these, okay? So we're going to let, now in this case, it's pretty simple to do it this way, okay? Let's let u equal r cosine 2 third, okay? So what does that mean? So that means uh, cosine of u is actually 2 third, right? That makes sense? Try to digest that, okay? So you guys, that means we're taking, we're doing, okay, tangent of, tangent of r cosine of 2 third, right? Okay, that's what we're doing, okay? All right. Or, or tangent of u is going to equal our solution, which is a ratio. But isn't that ratio actually opposite over adjacent in the end? All right, so keep that in mind. But you guys, so let's go back to here. This is a ratio, isn't it? So we can actually draw a triangle, can't we? And remember, our cosine, it's from here to here, right? Zero to pi. We've practiced that so many times now, right? So you guys, but where is a positive cosine? It's only here. So let's draw a triangle there. And doesn't that mean the adjacent is here and the hypotenuse is here? So what does that say about our our cosine really, right? Our y value, which is actually going to be root 5. Okay? And you should know how to do that by doing uh, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Okay? So that means we have our, we could uh, fulfill this. That means tangent of u is going to equal root 5 over 2 because it's going to be opposite over adjacent of this angle here. Okay? So you guys, that's our answer. So you guys, I'm going to try one more with you, and you try one, okay? What are you going to let u equal here? Let's let e, a, u equal, you got it, this guy right here. So it's going to equal r sine of negative 3 fifths, okay? All right, so if that's that, so that means, what does that mean? That means sine of u is equal to negative 3 fifths, which is a ratio. And keep in mind, arc sine, where is the range? It's from here to here, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. But where is the sign negative? It's only here. So if you know this triangle that you're going to draw, it's actually going to be in the fourth quadrant, something like that. Uh, this is our theta, 3, 5 here. 
okay? So what's the actual x? It's going to be 4. Fulfill that, okay? So that means, uh, that means let's figure it out. So, so uh, cosine of u, right? Because that's all u, that's all u, right? That's all u is going to equal adjacent over hypotenuse, right? So that means r cosine of r cosine, I'm sorry, sine, sine of negative 3 over 5th is going to equal adjacent over hypotenuse, so 4 fifth. Okay? That's good. So I'm going to give you some time to work on this one on your own. And you guys always remember to go back and re-watch the video, okay? So how about here? What are you going to think about? I'm going to think about the range of arc tangent, which is going to be from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Okay? What are you going to let your u equal? Your u is going to equal arc tangent 4 over 3. So that means, right, tangent of u is equal to 4 third, our ratio. Okay? All right, let's do our second part. Sine of u, right? So sine of u, that's what we're taking. But our u is, is going to be equal opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, keep that in mind. But you guys, where is the arc tangent positive? It's positive only here. So that's where you draw your triangle, right? So you go like this, and that's actually opposite over adjacent, right? So what's our ratio? It's gonna be three, four, five again. All right, it's pretty easy enough. That means our side of r tangent four third is gonna equal opposite, which is four and fifth. Easy peasy. All right, and don't be scared about the sec. Oh, no. Don't be scared, okay? Just do it. Take it slowly. This is going to be, right, always going to be in negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. I always think about the range, what to expect, how to draw my triangle that helps me, okay? On the unit circle, where is it going to be at, right? And obviously, arc tangent is going to be in quadrant 4. Keep that in mind. You're going to let your u equal arc tan negative 3 over 5th, okay? All right, negative 3 over 5th. But that means tangent of u is equal to equals negative 3 fifths. And that's how we were able to decide that. Okay, where does we draw the triangle? All right, so that means we're going to do sec of u. Remember, sec is cosine, right? The reciprocal function of cosine, that's going to be 1 over cosine. So it's going to not be, it's going to be hypotenuse over adjacent. Okay? All right, so hypotenuse over adjacent, that means our secant of arc tangent negative 3 fifths is going to equal hypotenuse, which, oh, we forgot to draw the triangle, huh, guys? It's going to be in the fourth quadrant, so like this. This is opposite. This is hy uh, adjacent. So that means our hypotenuse is actually 34, so root 34, because it's x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Ask each other why if you don't understand that part, okay? I'm sure there's one person at least, one person, okay, that understands. So it's going to be root 34 over 5. All right, good luck. All right, good luck. Good luck. It's really hard, so uh, I'll come back and explain to you. Okay, bye, guys.